السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Most gracious, most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى The creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer The one in whose hands lies absolute control of every single aspect of existence we praise him unconditionally. We send blessings and salutations upon the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah bless them. May Allah bless all those who struggled and strove over the years to bring the deen to us. And may Allah bless every one of us and our offspring. And may Allah bless humanity at large. Amin. My brothers and sisters, we know that our time on earth is quite limited. We have seen people who were stronger than us pass away. We have seen people who owned more than what we have pass away. We have seen people in greater authority than we perhaps may have ever been pass away. That is a lesson for every one of us to recognize that we are on earth in order to fulfill a role, in order to do something. And that, according to those who believe, and we are all believers as Jama'atul Muslimin, the group of believers, the group of those who have submitted unto Allah, we believe that this purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that we lead a decent life and we pass away better than the life that we've led on earth. For this to happen, we need to know the rules and regulations and we need to be encouraged from time to time to go back and follow these beautiful rules and regulations. For indeed, no matter how difficult it may seem that there are so many rules to follow, the more rules you follow, the more refined a human being you become, the more disciplined you are, the greater a personality you become, the closer you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because by disciplining ourselves as per the instruction of He who made us, who knows better than us what is better for us, we would definitely be heading in the right direction. My brothers and sisters, from this particular introduction, I'd like to get straight into a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is made mention of by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, and it is an authentic narration. He speaks of categories of people on the day of judgment who will be given a special shade. Now, you and I know that if you are at a busy airport or you are standing in a queue for something very important or you happen to be in a very, very uh, crammed up place where there are so many people, even if it was something simple like a football match, if you were to be singled out and brought to the front, let's be honest, how would you feel? You would feel very, very important. Someone standing there holding a board with your name, you know, you walk straight, you see, oh, it, had this not been here, perhaps I may have found it a little bit difficult, etc. You feel important. You feel like you have been valued. You feel that you have now reached a level that others perhaps have not. Even if it was just, as I said, a football match or a cricket match, you are now seated with the VIPs. That means you are someone. You happen to be a person who deserves it somehow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. That similar example shall be on the day of judgment, but in certain ways different. Different because there is no corruption regarding the hereafter. Sometimes you have a person who doesn't deserve a place, but you know, because maybe he might have paid someone to achieve something, so he's picked out in a way that's clandestine. And in this particular instance regarding the hereafter, it's got to do with your deeds. It's got to do with what you did while you were on earth to become a VIP on the day of judgment. So on that particular day, there will be seven categories of people who will be called out in a beautiful way to say, you are a VIP. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to come through and to give you a special shade on this day when it will be so hot or when it is very, very hot. The sun, according to the narrations, will be as close as a foot above our heads. People will be drowning in their sweat, according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each one's perspiration 
equivalent to the amount of sin that he or she had perpetrated without tawbah. Which means if you engaged in sin, but you repented to Allah, then that repentance will have wiped out the sins completely. So remember this. But it's only for those who died in a condition whereby they did not repent who will regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So from this beautiful hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Sab'atun yudhilluhum allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu. There are seven categories of people whom Allah will grant his own shade on the day that there will be no shade besides his. Exactly how that shade is going to be, I cannot describe beyond the description given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All we know is it will be an absolutely superb shade filled with coolness and comfort on a day when it will be most needed. Some of you who may have gone for Hajj, may Allah take us all for Hajj, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those who've made an intention to go for Hajj this year too. You know, in the peak of the heat, if you were to be standing in Arafah, how you would actually feel the heat of the day, but the spirituality of the day, the desperation, the moment, subhanallah, that dua, how badly we want it to be accepted and so on. Imagine if we were granted a beautiful, cool, cool, shaded place. How would we feel? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these seven, I will call them out. They will be called out on this particular day. The first one, Imam Adil. Now the reason why I start with this is because it's the beginning of the hadith. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about a ruler or anyone in authority over anyone else and is just, just. Now when we say Imam Adil, primarily it refers to the leader of the nation, the leader of the people who is just. A person whom, when he was sitting in a position of authority, he did not abuse that power. He did not misuse it. In fact, he was honest, he was upright, he was just, he was fair, he was balanced. And subhanallah, as a result of that, Allah says, you deserve a VIP status. Because when you were at the top, you were so humble, you were so honest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only grant us honest and beautiful leaders, but may Allah make us from among those whenever we have authority, even in our own little homes, over a person or two or more or less, we are people who are just. Be just. At your workplace, you may have authority. In your masjid, you may have authority. In, for example, your home, you may have some authority. Perhaps sometimes if you are traveling as a group, you may be a person responsible and in charge. Do not abuse it. Make sure you realize how important it is to be just as a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never give such a high status to a person had it been something minor or light or something small or easy to achieve. When you are in authority, make sure that you've done the best that you could while there. Bearing in mind... <coughs> that that authority will be taken away one day by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot remain in authority forever. Even if you're a father in the home, you have a certain sense of authority. Make sure you use it correctly. Don't do what your whims and fancies dictate, but rather do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do regarding your family members and your children. Let's move on. Then the hadith says, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi ta'ala. A young man or woman who grew up in the obedience of Allah during the days of their youth, when they were bubbling and bursting with energies, they directed and channeled those energies into the obedience of Allah rather than anything sinful. Subhanallah. So as you're growing older and as you're becoming adolescent and you find yourself at a time when you feel like you are on top of the world in strength, and you feel like you can do anything and beat anyone up, you harness yourself. You actually bring yourself within the obedience of Allah. You utilize that energy in the obedience of Allah. Brothers and sisters, from this we learn that the youth have a lot of energy. They are energetic. That energy needs to be channeled in the right direction. If you are not going to use that energy in the right direction, you will not be able to achieve the maximum from that particular age and stage of your life that will not come back. Subhanallah, there is an Arabic poem or a little couplet that 
makes mention of how a person would regret saying, You know, oh, an old man is saying, I wish that my youth could come back even for a day. Subhanallah, it's not going to happen. Because, wallahi, as you get older, you realize you are no longer as strong, as powerful, as energetic as you used to be when you were young. That is the plan of Allah. Allah الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة. Allah makes mention of it in the Quran. He creates mankind in a condition of weakness. From that, He transforms it into a condition of strength, and thereafter. He returns it to a condition of weakness again and gray hair. Subhanallah. This is the gift of Allah. So while you are in your peak, make sure you use this age in a way that is the most beneficial. If you have a thousand dollars, for example, and you are to start a business, you would be foolish. The first thing you do, go call all your friends and have a meal and say, don't worry, it's a thousand. I don't mind. I actually can take everyone out for a meal. Hang on, you were given the money in order to start up a business. Start the business, perhaps when you get a profit, you might want to then call your friends for a meal, etc. You don't just start off by eating into your capital because you know your intention is there. Yes, I do want to be charitable. I do want to give. But I cannot eat into this capital of mine. This is why, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the rules and regulations of zakat so fair, so fair that the tools of a trade, there is no zakat on. Because that's, those are the tools of the trade. How can I pay on the value of the tools through which I'm going to earn by which I will become charitable? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So my brothers and sisters, this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, as you're growing older, Think about it. Think about your energies. Channel them in the right direction. Today, we have the masjid. Make a little group of people. Get to the masjid. When you get to the masjid, don't just come and read your salah and walk off. Find out about the condition of the brothers and sisters who are there and perhaps others who may not have come. Find out why those who are sick and ill show concern. You are a young man. You are a young woman. You have energies. You have so much Allah has bestowed upon you. You have a fresh mind. Inshallah, not contaminated by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can come up with some beautiful, brilliant ideas. Share your thoughts, your ideas. They may not be considered always. You know, if we have a hundred youngsters and we are talking about how best we want to pack the Eid packs, for example, for, the des for, for those in Kailicha, for example, and put a smile on the face of the orphans and the widows, you might have 20 different ideas. At the end of the day, we have to choose one of those 20. Don't become despondent because your idea was not chosen. Inshallah, another time, it's impossible humanly to follow 20 different opinions for one thing. We have to follow one and we have to discount the other 19 even if they were good opinions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us share our views with the idea that they are just views. They don't have to actually be adopted. And may he never make us from those who become upset when our opinion was not the chosen one. Because there are others equally important. They are also good people, mashallah. They gave their views. This is just a piece of advice a practical piece of advice. So my brothers and sisters, you come into the masjid and it becomes a community affair. It's no longer a personal thing. It is a community affair. You are concerned about the elderly. You don't see someone. You inquire about them. You go and visit them. You pay them a, a visit or a phone call to find out, my brother, I didn't see you today. I hope you're okay. He might tell you I am not well. You make a dua for him. You tell him we are praying for you. This type of social cohesion is definitely stemming from the correct channeling of the, of the energies of the youth. That's what it would be. We need to make sure that we, as a community, as, as an ummah, we feel part of one another by channeling the energies. Today, unfortunately, and it's a reality, people prefer to sit with a computer game, with an iPad, with a phone, as old as they are, playing little games that will not get you anywhere. We get so excited with these games. I'm not saying don't play them at all, but you may want to make sure that you have balanced your timing, you know, I don't know why the older people are seeming to giving me an eye, meaning seemingly giving me an eye. 
But it's okay, even if you're slightly older, you might want to sometimes refresh your mind by seeing how the games work. However, we should not be spending more than a certain amount of time on things that don't have any benefit. No benefit at all for the broader society, broader community. You can spend a little bit of time to refresh yourself and it should stop there. Thereafter, you continue into real life things. Think of projects for those who are orphans, for those who are destitute. When we see beggars on the street, I'm sure they wouldn't like to beg. Well, I hope so. But at the same time, subhanallah, we need to think of ways of alleviating their suffering. Have you ever sat with some of them to say, look, what's your story? They might have a story that's amazing and it might inspire you to do something small. I know of some of these people who were homeless. Some of these homeless people, you know, back at home in Zimbabwe, they call them street children, subhanAllah, because they don't have anywhere to go. And I know of some who've been to school thereafter and they've come out big businessmen, subhanAllah. How? Someone had a concern, someone shared, someone sponsored, someone collected, someone did. And mashallah, I bear witness that there are so many from amongst our youth who are participating as volunteers in so many of these activities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of encouragement for the rest of us. I mean, so as we develop these energies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we will grow. We become slightly older. When we marry, we make sure we marry correctly. My brothers and sisters, marriage determines the rest of your life and how it will pan out. The choice you make for the person you want to live the rest of your life with needs to be very, very wise. It should not just be made spur of the moment, subhanAllah. You need to think about it in advance. Are the qualities in this particular person I'd like as a father of my children or a mother of my children, are they really there you know do they really fit that particular position that they're going to be holding in my heart and in my life because sometimes the decision we make regarding marriage can actually shatter the dreams that we may have had as a person just prior to marriage may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us if you're a spouse please support your spouse in goodness in that which is in the obedience of allah you are still young you are still included in the term youth so you are still growing May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. We need to support one another as family members, as brothers, as sisters. Let's go out and solve problems, not create problems. Every time there is an issue and a problem in society, ask yourself, have I been part of the problem or part of the solution? The answer should always be one of two things. Either I'm a part of the solution or I haven't participated in it. I haven't participated is better than being part of the problem. Subhanallah. For example, you find a WhatsApp message doing its rounds. You find, for example, nowadays people say things, they put up things, they have a status on Facebook, on the internet, etc. They say things. You need to ask yourself, is this good or bad? Is it productive or counterproductive? If it is productive, then Alhamdulillah, let me forward it. Let me make sure maximum people can benefit from it. If it is counterproductive, am I going to try and make it productive? If it is a problem, am I going to solve it? Am I going to try and inshallah minimize it? Or am I going to just blow air into this fire and try and get the flames to the maximum? If that is the case, what we start doing is we start forwarding it. We start creating bigger issues. Then is that a young man who grew up in the obedience of Allah? Is that a woman who grew up in the obedience of Allah when we are busy getting excited because others are fighting? That's not the sign of a good charactered person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of character. So my brothers and sisters, there is a lot that we could actually say regarding this particular category of people, the youth who have grown up in the obedience of Allah. Wherever you have faltered, go back and turn to Allah. Remember, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, 
Never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins. Indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. What a beautiful, beautiful verse. The hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us something powerful in three words. The one who has sought forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to the person who did not commit the sin at all. Amazing. What type of mercy? These are the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you have done something that you are not proud of, change it today. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Promise Allah, Ya Allah, the day that I arrive on, on that day of judgment, I would like to achieve this beauty and this shade. Forgive me, Ya Allah. I know you will give it to me. You are merciful, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we need to learn from we need to be hopeful in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't mean that you've had a false start so to speak for your race that you are suddenly disqualified completely because this is not just an olympic race it is life allah gives you countless chances for as long as you're alive allah gives you countless chances for as long as you're alive so keep on going and keep on turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what, have hope in the mercy of Allah and Allah will open your doors. Start doing your good deed. And I want to mention one more very interesting point before we move on to the next category. And that is, my brothers and sisters, when we commit sin, we commit sin privately. We are embarrassed to show people what we are doing. And in fact, it is good that people do not commit sin openly because the mercy of Allah is more closely connected to a person who's ashamed of what he's done in terms of wrong than the one who's proud of his sin. You know, you go out and commit adultery and then you want to post a video of it, astaghfirullah, that's not a mu'min, that's not a Muslim, right? But a person who committed the adultery in private and is embarrassed and didn't want anyone to know there is a greater chance of tawbah for that person than the one who's proud of the sin. So when we commit sin, we like to commit sin privately. Subhanallah. Is that not true? We don't want anyone to know I did something wrong. I, I, I don't want anyone to know what I've done. In order to combat that and in order to become a person close to Allah, I encourage myself and yourselves to do some good deeds in a similar fashion. Do you know what that means? Hide some of your good deeds. Such that only you and Allah knows that you did this good deed. No one else knows. So if I have read the Quran, say I read 10 Jews, for example, today, I don't need to put it on Twitter. MashaAllah, I've just completed my 10 Jews. Alhamdulillah. And everyone says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. Those 10 Jews, you say to Allah, nobody's going to know what I did for you. You and me, that's it. We have a habit. Someone completes an entire mushaf in the day and they put it up and they say, wow, this person finished the whole of the Quran through the day. Yes, someone might have seeped or leaked that information. However, try, consider what I'm saying, try to hide some of your good deeds so that at least on the day of judgment, when the bad deeds are seen to, be have, to, to, to have been committed in secret, there will be a whole host of good deeds that would also have been done in secret. No one knew that you used to feed a certain poor person, subhanallah. No one knew that you used to cry in the night, every night. No one knew you used to get up for tahajjud, for example. No one knew that you used to care for orphans. No one knew that you were a person who visited the sickly now and again, quietly, on your own. Nobody knew that. That's good because now you have balanced something. Now you have a good deed where you know Allah knows and it's a secret. Imagine how that would be in your favor on the day of judgment when you know you have that smile and you are saying subhanallah i know there's something i know allah knows no one knows subhanallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all let's move on to some of the categories mentioned in this beautiful long hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says rajulani tahabba fillahi ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi this applies to the youth and even those post youth the hadith says the categories of seven of the people who will be granted that shade Two of them are 
those who loved each other for the sake of Allah alone. They gathered for the sake of Allah. They departed also in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love you not because of your money, not because of your authority, not because of your popularity, simply for the sake of Allah. I may get a chance to tell that to you. I may not get a chance to tell that to you. So how is love for the sake of Allah? Let me tell you. When you hear someone saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there should already be one level of love between you and them. There should be. That is love for the sake of Allah. Why? This person shares the shahada that I have. The minute you, you feel the hatred in that, there is something wrong with your own shahada. That is what it is. There is something wrong with your own shahada. How can you hate others who utter La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even if they're making a mistake, you dislike their mistake, you dislike their error, but you don't dislike the person, you love them. Then you see someone coming into the masjid. What are they trying to achieve? They are trying to get closer to the same Allah you are trying to get close to. So we are all going in the same direction. When the World Cup was here in Cape Town, people started giving each other lifts to go to the venue because they didn't want a massing of vehicles there. So they were all heading for the same match. So we decided to create a lift club. You know what I'm talking about. So in the same way, we're all heading to Jannah. Let's create a lift club. I help you, you help me. I love you, you love me. Mashallah. I see you in the masjid. I'm so happy. Mashallah, you're reading salah. It doesn't mean that this uncle is taking so long in sujood, so he's a big show off. No. He is worshipping Allah. You need to love him for that. Subhanallah, a sister who's trying to wear her hijab and you see her on the street, it doesn't mean you have to greet her and you have to make yourself known as a young man. Hey, you know what? <clears throat> I'm available, by the way. That's not how it should be. No. You need to make dua for her without her knowing that you've made dua. Your heart needs to feel this connection for the sake of Allah. That's my sister. If you see any harm in her direction or if there is an opportunity to render any form of assistance for her, you should be the first one before anyone else because you have a deep connection and she's trying very hard to dress appropriately at a time when it is not easy to dress so appropriately due to the Islamophobia across the entire globe. So shouldn't it be a means of your happiness? You smile, mashallah, look at the sister, look at the brother. Mashallah, they are trying so hard. You see people reading the Quran. You see someone giving a charity. Think good things about one another. Someone gives a charity, don't say, he's just boasting because he's got a lot of money. Those are negative thoughts. They are not heavenly. They are not divinely inspired thoughts. They are thoughts that are actually coming and stemming from the, the evil of the devil and the evil of our own selves. So let's protect ourselves from this. This is why the hadith says, if you really love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience brings you together, you deserve VIP status. Subhanallah. Rajulani tahabba fillah ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Another quality, another category of person, rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajid. A, young, a man, whose heart is hanging in the masjid. In the case of the sisters, it would be true that her heart would be hanging to the salah. The next salah, when is it going to be? As soon as the time enters, you fulfill your salah, you deserve VIP status. As soon as the time of prayer enters, you drop everything, you fulfill your salah, you deserve a VIP status. You can start today, subhanallah. It's not difficult. The hadith continues. In fact, the hadith says, Rajulun da'athu imra'atun dhatu mansabin wa jamal faqala inni akhafullah. A person who is called, a man who is called to sin, and the same would apply to a woman who is called to adultery or fornication in a scenario where everything is facilitated. The person calling you is extremely good looking, extremely wealthy. Everything is facilitated. And you only say, I fear Allah. I can't do this. I can't do this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us in the face of sin. Today, sin is available wholesale. You are indeed a VIP. If for the sake of Allah, you can say, I can't do this. Allahu Akbar. When it's right in front of you, nothing is stopping you. Your energies are trying to push you in that direction. But your closeness to Allah makes you say, you know what? Not me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from sin. No matter what sin it is, my brothers and sisters, wallahi, if you stay away from it for the sake of Allah, you have contributed not only to your own closeness with Allah, but to society and community, cleansing it and inshallah improving the values and moral standards of society and community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I want to end with one last category. Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliyan fafadat aynahu. A man or a woman who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone 
When you're alone, you remembered Allah sometime, you heard a verse of the Quran, perhaps you saw one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you pondered over your condition, over the mercy of Allah, and that made you cry. If your eyes were filled with tears because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you deserve a VIP status. Allah says, we know, we've seen, we've watched. Sometimes your hair stands, you get goosebumps. You think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I've spoken for half an hour. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can take home at least a single lesson. And inshallah, we can improve ourselves. All the qualities we have, let them be divinely inspired. Let them be beautiful. Ask yourself, it's not difficult. What, how I think, how I operate as a human being, is it good or is it bad? Inshallah, every one of us, myself included, there is room for improvement. Let us, inshallah, seize the beautiful opportunity of the last 10 nights of Ramadan to change ourselves, to improve our relationships with those whom we live with, to seek forgiveness from our parents, our spouses, our in-laws, our children, our brothers, our sisters, to kindle a relationship that is broken would definitely get you into Jannatul Firdaus if it was done with the correct intention. My brothers and sisters, these are just some of the good deeds that we as youth need to consider very, very seriously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a good life and an even better death and an even better life after death. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.